Hey guys, now we recently had an issue with the solar setup on our trailer that wasn't just a fire hazard, but if given just a little more time, actually could have started a fire. And I'm making this video so that if any of you notice a similar problem with your solar setup, do not let it go unchecked. Diagnose the problem immediately so that you reduce your risk of fire hazard too. And before we get into it, I just wanna make it very clear that the issue we had is not a solar power specific problem and that solar power is incredibly safe. The problem that we experienced is a problem that could happen on any electrical system. And wherever there is a flow of electricity and something wrong with that electrical circuit, you have the risk of fire. So I just wanna reiterate that solar power is completely safe and we love our solar system. And for anyone that is interested in what we have on our trailer, we've got 480 watts of solar panels mounted to the roof of our trailer. Those panels feed electricity to an Outback FM60 MPPT programmable solar controller. And the solar controller then sends that electricity on to charge two 200 amp hour rely on lithium iron phosphate batteries wired in parallel for 400 amp hours of total electrical storage capacity. And then finally, a GoPower 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter supplies power to all of the 120 volt appliances in our trailer. And while our solar setup has been down, we've been keeping our batteries charged up with our Westinghouse iGen 2500 inverter generator. And there will be links to all these components in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. So I first noticed that there was something weird going on with our solar setup because I typically check our battery monitor, which is right here, to just see what the battery state of charge is and how many amps our solar is either charging or how much we are discharging from our batteries. So just like a typical day, I went over here and I checked how many amps we were bringing in, which is this readout right here. Now, bear in mind, our solar panels are all disconnected right now, so it shows that we're discharging two amps even though it's the middle of the day. Um, but on this particular day, I checked it and it showed that we were charging 18 amps. Where on a typical full sun day, like that day was, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, we're supposed to be bringing in about 27, maybe 28 amps. So 18 amps is a significant decrease in power. So I knew something was off. So then I went down here to this compartment, which is where our solar controller is. And like I said, it's an Outback FM60. And I checked this readout right here and it showed that our input voltage was only 15.6 volts. And that's really off because our so solar panels are supposed to be supplying 18 to 18.6 volts in full sun. So I knew something very weird was going on. So once I noticed that our input voltage from our solar panels to our solar controller was so low, I called Go Power Technical Support because they are who manufactures our solar panels as well as the inverter we have, and they have excellent technical support. Uh, I called them and they really helped when I installed this solar system, so I knew they would have the answer to what was going on here. And they told me to check all my connections first, which is exactly what I did. I checked the wire connections to the solar controller and then I also checked all of the connections behind the AC panel uh, and the DC panel which is where the solar controller then sends the uh, current to to go charge our batteries and all of those connections were just fine. So then once I verified that all the connections that are made inside and under the RV were all fine, all of my grounds looked good and there were no loose connections inside, GoPower then advised that I come up onto the roof of the trailer, which is where we are now, and measure the output voltage of each solar panel individually using a multimeter. So I disconnected all of the MC4 branch connectors that wire these solar panels all in parallel and measured the output voltage of the solar panels individually by just sticking in the prongs of the multimeter into the now open MC4 connectors that lead to the solar panels. And each solar panel measured 21 volts, which is right where they should be measuring with their open circuit voltage with full sun on them. So with the output voltages of all of the individual solar panels checking out, the last thing to check was the output voltage of the entire array of all three solar panels wired in parallel. And the way to do that is to disconnect the final branch connector, positive and negative, just before it leads into the RV to the solar controller, check the output voltage there. See if 
for some reason wiring them in parallel is having some sort of issue or if one of the MC4 branch connectors um, that are tying two solar panels in uh, parallel if there was an issue with those. But when I went to touch this first branch connector here, it was so hot, it burned my thumb and my index finger. Not bad, but it did hurt for the next couple days. And then I noticed that these have gotten so hot that the plastic housing of these MC4 branch connectors was melted and distorted. The positive lead was bent and ha was bent over a little bit, as you can see. And at the time, it was so hot that just picking it up, it started to like bend back over itself just from its own weight, and it was like twisting. It wasn't hard plastic anymore. It was like an amorphous, or nearly melted plastic. Very scary. And then the negative. Um, MC4 branch connector was melted also, but it wasn't quite as like amorphous, but it had begun to bulge uh, to the point that I couldn't even disconnect the connector because as you can see, the teeth of the, or I guess the pins of the MC4 connector that kind of snap it into place were smashed they were like smashed with the housing since it had bulged and I just couldn't uh, disconnect this MC4 connector at all. So I knew immediately this was the issue. I called Go Power's technical support again for the third time at this point and they were still so incredibly helpful and he told me that if they're getting that hot, then there is some arcing going on in those MC4 connectors. There's a bad connection somehow. Maybe they vibrated loose or maybe they weren't, you know, put together or snapped together completely enough to make a good connection. Whatever the reason, there's a bad connection at these MC4 connectors. There is arcing going on inside of them and it is a fire hazard and they need to be disconnected immediately. So that's exactly what I did. But since I couldn't disconnect these um, connectors themselves because not only were they so hot, but they were melted to the point that they just couldn't be disassembled. I just disconnected each solar panel individually from, it, from each other, so it de-energized the entire system. So thankfully the fix for this is pretty easy. I've ordered new MC4 branch connectors that I'm going to replace these old melted, destroyed and deformed ones with. And not only that, but I've also ordered new regular MC4 connectors that are going to attach to these wires uh, because I think this happened uh, because of my own fault. I used a different brand of MC4 connectors than I did for the branch connectors. So I'm wondering if maybe the pins that are inside of these when they go together like this, maybe just aren't as precision fitting together as they would be if they were from the same manufacturer. And maybe that was causing the electrical arcing uh, along with just the vibration of going down the road. Um, I think maybe just being different brands, they didn't really you know, gel together as well as I would hope they would have. So this time I've got the exact same brand of MC4 connector and MC4 branch connector. So yeah, hopefully the connection they make is solid and we don't have this issue again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this wire off from this MC4 connector. I would have liked to just disconnect that MC4 connector and pull the wire out of it, but like I said, it was so melted and deformed that I can't. And then I need to crimp this MC4 pin onto the wire here, and unfortunately, I don't have enough wire up here right now, so I don't think I can use this wire holder. So I will be getting another so that I can uh, hold this wire down a little further back this way on the roof of the trailer. So then I need to strip this wire back. And then we can crimp this down using an MC4 crimper. Which is really nice because it does the crimping all in one step. There we go. Now these are really nice. If you plan on doing any solar work, solar installation on your own rig, I highly suggest getting one of these. They're only $20 on Amazon 
or you know between 20 and 30 and yeah they crimp the mc4 pin all in one motion they're really nice again i'll post a link to that in the description below as well and then go ahead and slip on this end cap and then put on this seal And then you can place the body of the MC4 connector over all of that, and you should feel a nice positive snap when that body locks onto the pin that we crimped on, and that's not coming off now. And then we can bring up the end cap and thread that on. And as this threads on, it pushes down on that the plastic that went around that blue seal to really make a good grip on that and really seal that down to the uh, to the wire for a watertight seal. And I actually purchased some MC4 wrenches. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description below to these as well. And these are really nice because they give you leverage so that you can really get this cap down tight. I didn't use these originally when I first did my solar install, but I wish I would have had these for that because they are really nice. And just be sure that you're not twisting the wire um, because you don't want to, you know, break that wire from twisting it. And that's nice. These uh, MC4 connectors I bought have a nice uh, click when you get all the way tight. They just kind of click, 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 and that's it. And there's one connection good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hook the, the branch connector up just into this MC4 connector. And that went on really tight. That feels really good, I like that. Uh, I'm gonna wait to connect the solar panels back up to it until I've got this other MC4 connector replaced as well. And then on this side, I have to do essentially the same thing. I have to start by cutting the wire off of this MC4 connector because again, you know, just like the other side, it's so melted and deformed that I can't disassemble the MC4 connector. And then I need to strip this wire back to fit an MC4 pin on there, but I'll go a little further back so that the seal can fit. And then just like the other side, we'll use our MC4 crimping tool to get a real nice crimp. One step again, let's take it all the way down, pops off, and you've got a nice crimp. Love this tool. I'll get the end cap on there, the seal, and then we can go ahead and put the pin housing on. Oops. And again, you should feel a nice little snap. And then that is not coming off. Give a little pull test just to make sure you got it on there properly. And that is not going anywhere. And then bring our cap up and thread it on with our fingers first. And then again, using our nifty MC4 wrenches, really do make the job easier. We can go ahead and tighten that down to make a nice water tight seal on this one as well. And again, once it starts clicking like that, it is as tight as it needs to be, and that's it. And then we can go ahead and put on our nice new unmelted branch connector. So now that we're ready to completely reconnect the panels, I've shaded a cell on every solar panel so that it knocks out any current that they, any potential current, I should say, that they would be creating. And now we can go ahead and plug in all of our connections so that our solar panels start providing current again. We can take these off, go inside and see if we're getting the amperage and voltage that we should be seeing or that we should be getting. 
So I went ahead and tilted the solar panels back down so that they were flat on the roof because we're actually into that part of the year where tilting them up actually decreases their output. You know, we're into June, so they need to be flat now. Uh, but you can see our current that our solar panels are providing is 22.3 amps now, which, you know, you may be thinking, I thought you said that they should be outputting 27 to 28, which is true, but it's 4.15. It's been taking me a little longer than I would have hoped to film and replace those MC4 connectors. So we're actually into the afternoon already, or I mean the evening. So, you know, we're not gonna have max performance anyway. And you actually see it's kind of fluctuating between 22.3 and 22.2 now. As the sun continues to set, it's gonna slowly drop. So that is a number that is normal. And hopefully tomorrow I can double check that when we're, you know, around noon or one o'clock uh, when it's supposed to be making all of the output that it can. Hopefully we're back to 27 to 28 amps. So here are the two old MC4 branch connectors that I replaced. And you can see on this first one that it's bent right here where the bad connection was being made. It got so hot that it just bent under its own weight, I guess, and just deformed. Like I said, when I originally went up there and checked it, it was so hot and so, I don't it was so close to melting completely that this whole thing would just bend and it twisted right here like it wasn't plastic, like it was, I don't know, some sort of gel, it was crazy. And these tabs, I couldn't even get off because they're deformed as well. And then the other one got so hot that it began to bulge right here. You can see that bulging, as opposed to a brand new MC4 connector right here. You can see, obviously, there's no bulging. Pretty crazy, huh? This whole experience has just really reinforced in Jenny and I how awesome RV boondocking is with solar because listening to this all day, every day is annoying. One second. There, that's better because solar is quiet, there's no maintenance, it just sits up there and does its thing. We had to run this literally all day while our solar was down for three days because Jenny and I, we run our YouTube channel on the road with or inside our RV, so having two laptops running all day every day really uses a lot of power. We were burning over two gallons a day on our generator and that comes out to well over two thousand dollars a year, closer to 2,500 actually when you factor in oil changes and maintenance on the generator. We would have to do an oil change every single week if not more often because these inverter generators require an oil change every 50 hours so no thank you. I mean, let's be honest, when you're boondocking out in the national forest or on BLM land, you don't wanna to listen to a generator. You wanna connect with nature. I mean, we live out here and listen. It is dead quiet. And when you have a silence like that, just the noise of a generator is just that much more intrusive. And then you've got to deal with gasoline, filling it up. You've got the exhaust that if the wind's blowing toward the toward the RV, you're getting exhaust into the trailer, so you gotta move the generator, you know, to the other side of the rig so that you're not getting exhaust in. And you guys know, the wind changes all the time, so sometimes you're just to hell with it and you close the windows on that side of the trailer. Generators are just a hassle that I don't wanna deal with. Solar is almost hassle-free. This is the very first problem that we've had in two years that we've been on the road, living in our trailer full time. And, you know, we didn't even know what it was like relying on a generator for power because we have had solar on the roof of our trailer ever since day one when we very first hit the road. So this has really been an eye-opening experience and I've always hated getting the generator out. So having to live off of the generator 
has just been awful. I mean, it's it's great having a generator in the bed of our truck as a backup for, you know, if we get a string of cloudy days in a row and we need to fire up the generator to charge our batteries back up, or in a situation like this where the solar has an issue and it goes down and, you know, we gotta power our trailer somehow. So, you know, it's better to have a generator than not have a generator. So I will say that having our Westinghouse iGen 2500 on us has been great and you know you definitely want to have something so if you guys plan on doing any boondocking or dry camping in your rv i highly recommend getting solar and i highly recommend go power as the company you go to to get your components because even though this was the first problem that we've ever had in two years of having solar on our trailer we have never had an issue with the components that go power manufactures our inverter our transfer switch, our converter charger, and our solar panels are all manufactured by GoPower, and we've never had an issue with one of them. And GoPower technical support is fantastic. Their support after the sale is another reason I would highly recommend them. They, you know, they don't just try and sell you things and then blow you off after the fact. If you have issues, they help you out. I've called technical support many times during the installation and times after that just to figure things out if I've got questions and they've always been happy to answer them. And again, there will be links in the description below to all the components we have, including the generator. And even though I hate getting the generator out, like I said, I have to admit that I'm glad we've got the Westinghouse on hand. It has been great and it always fires up and does exactly what we need it to do. So again, the whole point of this video has been just to raise awareness to those of you that have solar on your RVs or maybe are looking to put solar on your RVs to just periodically check your connections every now and then. Say you're getting up on the roof to tilt your panels up or tilt them down or maybe even just clean them. Just check everything real quick, doesn't take long. You may catch an issue before it becomes catastrophic like I was able to. And also just kind of pay attention to your battery monitor. And if you don't have a battery monitor, definitely get one. Uh, the readout on the solar controller sometimes isn't as accurate or as thorough as what you get in a full-fledged battery monitor. You know, check your battery state of charge, check your input or an, an output current just to make sure that it's normal. And if your numbers aren't normal, you know there's an issue and don't let it go unchecked. Call technical support, tell them what's happening and figure out what the issue is immediately before something catastrophic happens. I'm so thankful that I noticed that we had something weird going on with our solar, got up on the roof and noticed this fire hazard before it actually caught fire. And again, I just have to say that solar is completely safe. This problem is not something that is specific to solar systems. It can happen on any electrical system because again, if you have flowing electricity and a bad connection, that is a fire hazard. So whether it's a solar system, a regular RV electrical system, or even the electrical system throughout homes, things like this do happen unfortunately. You have bad connections that start fires. We love our solar setup. We are so glad that we have it and we rely on it every single day to power our trailer. And another huge shout out to Go Power for helping me out and having great technical support. You guys are awesome. Oh, and another little tip for those of you that are looking to put solar on your RVs. Even though the primary reason that you would have your panels tilt up is so that you can capture extra solar energy in the winter months when the sun is lower on the horizon, it's also really nice to be able to tilt them up so that you can work under the solar panels if you need to replace something. Like you saw earlier, my panels were tilted up and the only reason they were is so that I could get to the MC4 connectors easily and be able to test them with the multimeter as well as repl replace the two bad branch connectors. So even if you think you'll never tilt them up to capture extra energy in the winter and the fall, uh, maybe you'll still want to be able to have the ability to tilt them just so that you can do that work under them easier and even be able to inspect your roof that's under the panels too. It's just a thought. But we are so happy now that our solar is working again. We've been living off of our generator for three full days while we while we've been waiting for the replacement parts to be shipped to us. So I'm so happy to get this thing back in the truck, get in there, and you stay in there. <laughs>